Welcome to FIG's weekly economic and trading update. I'm Mark Bailey and this is Jessica Russett. Hi Mark. So last week we had CPI data released domestically and out of the US President Trump unveiled his tax plan. What were you seeing come through in economic terms? Yeah, I mean you've hit the two main ones on the head then, Jess, in terms of the Australian data, pretty lightweight apart from um, CPI. Uh, the core uh, inflation figure came in at 0.5 underneath expectations of 0.6 and also the trimmed mean and weighted median, which is the RBA's both preferred measures of inflation, were also pretty weak as well. Not that you would guess that by reading the press, they were all very much focused in terms of, you know, that the, the headline inflation figure was now at the bottom end of the RBA's 2 to 3% band at 2.1%, but generally speaking, they were pretty weak economic data uh, points for the, for the CPI. Moving to the States, we had a, a, a pretty heavy raft of negative economic data below consensus, but most of the um, economists and, and the markets were focused heavily on Trump's tax plan. The details of which were very light on, corporate tax rates hopefully going to be cut to 15%, but there was no indication in terms of how that was actually going to be paid. And they have to be tax neutral uh, for the budget to actually get passed, otherwise they can only be implemented for a 10 year period and then they get repealed. So there's still a lot of detail to be um, resolved there. There wasn't a huge amount of implications in terms of what you saw in terms of the Treasury market moves, so the market's actually not believing that these uh, tax plans are going to go through. Importantly for those holders of high yield bonds, there was no talk at all, no mention of any um, repealing of the interest uh, deductibility on the tax side of things, so that was a positive for US high yield bonds there. But apart from that, you know, a slew of negative data it was against the backdrop, which probably means that the Fed Reserve probably probably is going to sit on its hands for a while. So Jess, with the CPI print that we saw out of um, uh, Australia, kind of slightly weaker than expected, that's probably got a, an implication for investors in the, in the inflation link space. Anything else of interest that happened in your week? Yes, yeah, so we had inflation released and that ha did come in uh, weaker than expected, but it is at the lower end of the RBA range of 2 to 3%. And so with that it has made inflation quite topical with clients uh, that are looking to review and reallocate their portfolios. So the case with most inflation bonds is that they are quite high rated bonds uh, and they are also lower risk as well. So that works well with clients that are looking to reduce the risk exposure in their portfolio. These bonds are mainly for infrastructure projects that are at the lower um, or at the the operational phase, so that's the, the last phase for these projects and the revenues actually derive from monthly payments that come from state governments, so they are lower risk investments. Yeah, and, and that kind of ties in with the thing that we've been talking about to clients for the last six or nine months about de-risking their portfolios and I know that overnight Bank of America talking about US high yield market and US high yield bonds that maybe they're looking you know, fairly uh, overpriced and maybe due to have a bit of a pullback and a correction, so we've certainly been guiding clients into decreasing their risk in their portfolios, moving up the investment grade spectrum to better quality, higher rated corporate bonds. That ties in, to, in on that theme. Yeah, that's right. And also adding to that as well, we have seen ongoing demand for investment grade bonds. And so we added three new uh, bonds to the direct bonds list. Uh, that was GPT, Osnet, and also Hyundai as well. So once again, they're not the highest yielding bonds, but they are uh, very high rated uh, and they're a more defensive allocation into a portfolio. Uh, another big theme for the clients at the moment is also reinvesting funds that they're receiving from a lot of buybacks that have been called at the moment, in particular in the US dollar space is Bar Minco and also Broad Spectrum. So another bond that FIG did add to the direct bond list was Talon 2022 maturity and that's in the US dollar as well. So clients have been switching from those other two uh, called bonds and into this one. Uh, it's also of a similar uh, maturity as well and also maintaining that US dollar exposure. Uh, but the other thing with this is that it has a, it, it's quite high yielding and some sort of the similar uh, credit quality as well as bar and and broad spectrum. So there's a pickup in yield without having to take on too much additional risk for doing so. Yeah. And then also domestically as well, there's uh, rumours, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's been confirmed about Next DC looking to potentially buy back his two uh, existing, yeah, yeah. existing issues and, and then reissue as well, which again ties into that reinvestment theme quite nicely. Exactly. So we'll stay tuned as to what's to, to come out there. But yeah, there is a, a raising of $200 million uh, for a, a, another bond in that case. So we'll, uh, we'll see what comes there. 
The RBA meets next week. What do you expect to come out of that meeting? I don't think there's going to be too much of interest. I think they're going to hold rates at 1.5% and I think the rest of the market believes that to be the case as well. It'd be interesting to see if there's a continued commentary regarding about the CPI which we've just talked about, you know, actually being a bit weaker than expected and that's not actually coming through. And then maybe also some commentary in terms of the house prices and whether some of the macro prudential um, rules that they've brought in are actually starting to control the, the house prices, especially in Sydney and also in Melbourne. Also offshore, the Fed does meet as well. Again, I think it's going to be a fairly uh, boring statement. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of change. Also uh, on Friday, uh, we get the uh, GDP figure as well. And there's been a lot of revisions downwards to that uh, forecast as well. So again, it's going to be a key economic data print for the Fed on top of their preferred inflation manager as well in terms of the core PCE. We do get that uh, as well later on in the week. So quite a heavy data week in the States, uh, but still the focus on, on central banks. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, Mark. And thanks for watching. Tin hats on, enjoy. If you need any more information, please go to The Wire.